Okay, the first thing that I have to say, uh, the safe machine use and machine cleaning can be considered by someone. Ultrasound is a safe tool for imaging fetal and maternal structure throughout the pregnancy. The one small point is important. Gel is placed direct on the skin. And okay. Of course, this is so. Induction labor is a is a is a topical issue at the moment, especially because of the last papers which were published on the new world selective induction on labor. And I and what I mean, I mean the arrived study from the U.S. So during this brief talk, I will try to go through the different main aspect of indication, contraindication, and what is the evidence of the induction induction on labor. So this is one of my hobbies the last years. I'm just looking at different guidelines and trying to spot the differences and the uh, similarities. And obviously living in a country like Greece where um, we are not leaders in establishing world uh, guidelines. Thank you, Themis, for being my friend. <laughs> and for organizing this course together with Professor Sam and, and uh, counting on me. Thank you. Um, so now we will discuss on method, methods of induction of labor. And <clears throat> there we go. So just briefly to repeat once and another that uh, the first thing we have to do. So we are going to talk about the criteria for induction labor, induction of labor failure. And I think it's going to be really interesting because we are talking about many things, but we still don't have really, really clear criteria so far. So to start, we can say that induction of labor, induction of labor is as we all know, and we are talking in a course about induction of labor is the artificial initiation of labor before it's spontaneous onset. Uh, I won't be having a cursor, so if you excuse me, I won't be able, I'll, I'll just have to, to tell you to look right or left. Anyway, as Tammy said before, uh, during the introduction, one of the hottest topics that's been on for the last how many professors in 30 years, or maybe more than that, is whether to have an induction at, at which time period. And that came back even more uh, hotter, is, came back again recently after the arrived trialess Francesco, for uh, joining us, um, I, th I know that... that yes, induction of labor is a very common problem and it's made worse in England because of shortage of staff. So we haven't got enough midwives in almost every maternity unit in England. And majority of the infrastructure with management of induction of labor, it depends on having the right amount of staff to make sure that these women are looked after. So uh, this is a major problem because uh, I will now be approaching preliminary observed membranes at term, as its management can still be a bit controversial. So in order to do this, I think uh, the following aspects are important. First place, why uh, we should assess um, preliminary observed membranes in a course of, of induction. Uh, so I am going to talk about labor induction in a special case, which is growth restricted uses. And we have talked about it before. We've said that labor induction is not the same for everyone and we should not treat every woman the same. That, that, that's the point. And her fetus is not the same. So there so, are some questions uh, in Q&A box, Tamis. Excellent. So Maria is asking, which is the best management for preterm prom? Induction of labor 34 weeks or uh, expectant management until 37 weeks, if there aren't any contraindications. So if you are in the UK, Ranjit, you have to answer that you... Good. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, coming back for today. Uh, we had a very, you know, packed but very nice uh, meeting yesterday and discussion. And then we're, we're going to cover the other aspect of induction of labor today. It will be a little bit more sophisticated topic today. Okay, thank you, everybody. I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor uh, Shen and Professor 
uh, Douglas, Temis, and Chiad for the uh, efforts in organizing this course. Uh, it's a really enthusiastic topic. Uh, I will talk about the prediction of success of induction of labor, and I will try to be very quick in order not to go over time. So, uh, the topics of my presentation today is about uh, the management of the prolonged first and second stage. As we know, it's more frequent when we a woman is induced in labor. The definition of first and second stage comes from a lot of time ago. In 1935, Friedman, on studying 500 nulliparas. Thank you, Temis, and, um, and thank you for organizing this course. It, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'll be talking about ultrasound before instrumental delivery. And I feel that a lot of what I'm going to talk about, um, there has been already a very nice introduction by Nicola and by uh, Professor Rizzo. So they made my life a lot easier. Um, but essentially what I'll be talking about is uh, vaginal examination. We'll look at the limitations of vaginal examination. So we are moving a little bit away from ultrasound. Uh, myself is a fetal medicine guy also, but I love doing obstetrics and I, I'm really in charge of a huge uh, delivery units to two uh, major hospitals. We have, we cover about 30,500 deliveries and about one out of every three babies who are born in Finland are delivered in our hospital. So we are really keen, very keen on uh, Thank you very much for the kind invitation and congratulations to you, Themis, and to Professor Sen for this excellent webinar. So um, in these two days, I have seen many presentations about the induction, about the labor arrest. And as Professor Sen said yesterday, in some countries, including Greece, we have, I would say, very high rates of labor arrest, of uh, failed induction or failure to progress. So, so my topic is uh, methods to safely reduce the cesarean section. And uh, we all know that uh, worldwide, the frequency of cesarean section continues to increase. And uh, the interventions to reduce the unnecessarily cesarean sections have shown uh, no success. So going to the WHO statement. Um, so uh, thank you so much for your um, uh, for the read opportunity to share uh, this uh, data with with you. Uh, we should really focus on induction of labor with it improved the perinatal outcomes that are attributed to ethnic and socioeconomic inequalities. So the data from uh, from UK or from England is consistent that the stillbirth rate is twice as high in black women compared to white women. It's about 50% higher um, stillbirth in Asian women compared to white women. And there's about... Just to give you some detailed information, 